Are we leaving the door open because uh, we need to leave the door? Oh, okay. Yes. Can we get started and her slip in because we it's, start. well, it's 11.52 and okay. I want to get plenty of time for questions, so. I will listen with Ashley and our group is six in the city and we are Sean Long, Sarah Kinsler, Victoria Whitaker, Savannah Wheeler, and Jory Spacito. And for our report, we decided to research and discuss uh, the current lab availability, the communications lab availability, and the issues with the current hours. After research, it's believed that extending the hours would increase overall student performance in their grades. Um, and if we did so, like increase the hours during key times like finals weeks and midterms. Uh, we believe that, there, that this, because of their course specific software that's on there that is expensive and that is required for many assignments and a lot of communications courses that the lab should be available available more, especially during those key times when the, it's high traffic hours. Uh, for this report, we conducted four interviews uh, with people in the communication department that are affiliated with the lab to kind of gain knowledge on what has and has not worked in the past, the um, reason for the current hours, and some maybe su suggested solutions from them. Our secondary research came from articles that were related to the issue. Uh, these articles discuss similar issues from other universities with their uh, uh, lab availability, challenges they encountered with uh, extending hours, studies that prove the significance of student access to the labs, and the importance of allowing student access to computers with course-specific software. Based on financial concerns and limit, limited staffing, it is unrealistic to open the, the computer lab for longer hours throughout the entire semester, but it is very realistic to but, like work with some solutions to extend it during the times, during midterms and finals weeks. Um, but now that I've given a preview of what our report entails, Jory is going to discuss some research. Okay, um, I did the primary research, which as Elizabeth said, we um, conducted four interviews uh, just to get a kind of general idea of the, their opinion on the hours and just um, if the, the problems with that or what they see um, is good about it. And anyways, we interviewed uh, Dr. Oliveira, Dr. Kinzer, Lorianne, who's the secretary upstairs, um, and Lise Cutshaw. Why did you pick those? Um, well, we picked uh, Lorianne, uh, the, uh, the secretary, because we thought she's in there a lot. She um, sees a lot of traffic go in and out, and um, she also closes uh, the lab at times. She's just uh, there often. Um, Dr. Kinzer and Dr. Oliveira, because they're very actively involved um, with the comm department and the comm students and since it's a uh, lab that is primarily set up for the mass communication students, we thought it would be good um, to talk to them and find their opinion. And Lisa Cutshaw, uh, we originally thought Megan Fannin because her office is right there in uh, the lab, but uh, decided to go with uh, Lise Cutshaw because she had worked in there for so many years before and just really had a good idea um, and could provide really good information about about what she had seen going through there and stuff like that. Anyways, um, in her interview, uh, she, um, a lot of the information we got from her, not so much was the funding, which we saw a lot of talk in the other three interviews, but, but more of um, the, the positive asset that it was to the comm students. She really uh, thought it was a really good thing and said that she wishes it could be 24 hours uh, and maybe even open on a weekend day like Saturday, but she realizes that um, it's not a very 
uh, uh, possible thing. Um, she did say that if we were able to make a change, she uh, would think it would be very positive outcome. But if it wasn't publicized properly and people didn't get word of it, then nothing would change. So we'd really have to figure out a way to advertise that, to get it out to the comm students, to ensure that they're aware that the lab is going to be open for so many hours so that they'll get a good use out of it. Um, with Dr. Oliveira, um, she talked about um, the inconveniences and the hours uh, for the students. She um, sees that a lot, but she also holds a key, so she will um, let students in if she needs to. She's kind of uh, laid back on that um, part of it. But she also is pretty, feels pretty strongly that she wishes it would be just a calm student lab only. There's a lot of traffic of the education students going in and out of there and um, they have it set up to where if you aren't uh, mass communication, if you're not within that department, then you need to pay for the prints that you use and they don't do that hardly ever um, so that was definitely a frustration for her but she um, this was a quote about she said she realizes that it's funded um, all the students pay for the lab so you can't really say you can't come in here even though it's it, it's designed for the comm students you you have to let um, them in as well because they're also paying for it um, and it was, it's the lack of funding she sees, it's the lack of funding to change the hours um, and stuff like that. Let's see. Uh, Dr. Kinzer, she, let's see. Um, um, not enough student workers. She talked a lot about needing more student workers, more funding to pay them. Uh, she's willing to entertain implementing the ideas um, to try to find a way to have more hours like during the midterms and exam weeks um, and provided some ideas for that like um, if you save the hours um, for the student workers till the end of the semester we'd be able to have the lab open for a longer period of time towards the end but ended on the note that funding is the biggest obstacle for why we don't have the lab open for longer. And uh, Lori and the secretary kind of said the same thing as the rest of them. It's really the funding. Um, finding it is difficult because they've cut, um, they've cut it in half twice. Not so. It's just, and I think they've talked about possibly cutting it again. Um, so it's, that's just really, it's really difficult to find a way around that with just the minimal amount of funds that we have. And now Sean is going to talk about the secondary research. Just a few quick things before I uh, dig into the research as an addendum to talking about while we interviewed uh, Dr. Kinzer. Part of that was because she is the department chair. Uh, so we knew that we would be questioned afterwards, and so I can just default to her and say that it, it's over all of our heads, and, and she gets to <laughs> have the final say on that as well. Um, also, uh, it was interesting to find articles uh, talking about a computer lab because almost everything is outdated. Um, technology is constantly moving, constantly evolving, and people are constantly coming up with new ideas to implement, implement new ways to use the technology. So it was interesting to find all these articles talking about uh, rationales to use Wi-Fi in a lab, and like an entire paper, like, you know, we're going to try it out and see if it works, you know, kind of thing. Um, so it was very difficult to find articles, but the articles that we did find, uh, we were using all of them to inform the claims of our point as to uh, difficulties in increasing hours uh, by looking at other ways in which labs across the country on different campuses have changed their labs as well as the uh, beneficial things that have come out of that as well. And so moving into it, uh, this article uh, went to talk about uh, the biggest um, complications that we have and challenges that we have uh, while trying to open labs for more hours. Uh, this one in particular was opening up an extended hours lab beyond uh, what we are looking and they expanded the scope to 24 hours. What's the, the date on this? On uh, this? this one is, I'm wanting to say 2007 on this one. Um, I don't think we ended up putting the dates in there. They are on the uh, reference page in the paper though for sure um, in the citations. 
Um, but the biggest problem that they found while trying to staff this lab is uh, student workers. The reason that you need student workers in the lab is to ensure uh, that there is no theft. Um, and then they also, the problems that they ran into is it's expensive to uh, operate a lab. There's a lot of electricity, new computers, things like that. But especially for this one being an extended hours lab, uh, the biggest problems they ran into with pricing was having to add security cameras for when they couldn't staff student workers, adding in uh, the electronic ID swipe card so you can come through so they know who's there and who is not at any given time, and also maintaining the lab. And so the idea of staffing student workers and watching stuff is so that there's less maintenance cost because things are not being stolen, things are not being mistreated, uh, because when people are being watched for some reason, uh, they like to uh, break things. So. Um, also, in, in this article, it goes to talk more about that as well as far as theft prevention, um, but it also expands into student safety and the fact of if you have people who are being watched in the lab, uh, they're less likely to commit crimes on other students. Um, and not only student safety as far as their physical safety, but also other people walking in uh, on students who are maybe engaged in activities that they should not be in a lab just because they are alone, um, and that's problematic as well. Um, for their own personal well-being, and if it's something they don't want to see, it may emotionally scar them. You don't want that. You don't want the school being sued. Um, and that also goes back to something Dr. Kinder said as far as, because uh, I was the one who interviewed her personally, uh, she talked about maintaining the integrity of the department. And so that's one of the reasons that um, student workers are staffed in there as well. Some of the uh, benefits for uh, having a, an open access lab and giving more hours of access is because, of course, specific software. There's a uh, number of things that cost a lot of money to uh, put on your computer, such as Photoshop. Um, we used in vivo and qualitative uh, research methods, and that's something that we did not have uh, on our home computers, nor would we ever want it or ever use it because the thing barely works. Um, but it is available to students there in the lab to use on their computers that they, don't, that they do not have at home. And these programs can cost hundreds, and Photoshop, if you buy the entire suite, I think it's like $500, $600. Um, of course, there's other ways to procure that, uh, but we don't want to encourage uh, illegal behaviors in students obtaining software from the internet. But this talked about, um, this article here, giving access to their students uh, for this course specific software and uh, the benefits that they have from that and the successes that they perceived of themselves because they had access to this software. Um, in this article, what it was talking about was they gave uh, a control group and the experiment group and they gave um, laptop access and this, this is a little bit of an older uh, article at this point because at this point it seems almost absurd that not everybody has a laptop. But they gave access to certain students for uh, having laptop access. They gave uh, surveys to students who only had lab access and what they found was that just giving someone a laptop and just giving them more access outside of the lab experience did not make them feel as if they were more competent, did not make them feel as if they, uh, that they performed better on their work or made them any more comfortable with the work that they were doing. So the idea is that having lab access uh, was the thing that was important and so that moves us into... Did you get, clarify for me, did they give laptops so it did they give laptops to a, a they, subset yeah, of the they students? they provided uh, laptops for the students so that they could take home. Um, and so what they, they were uh, able to have them outside of the classroom, which for me, if I was in the class, that would kind of take me off if I didn't have a laptop and somebody got it and I didn't and I just had to be in the lab. But that was the experiment that they did. And um, as I said, you know, it, it indicated that they did not feel more competent just because they had it at home. So there was something about the lab experience that gave them the perception as if they were more competent to complete their work. Um, and then that moves us into, uh, I think this is the most recent article that we have, was from 2009, uh, Uses of Labs and Learning Spaces. And so what they were doing in this one is they took a, a traditional lab that, they had pictures of the lab that looked like this, and so they had computers stacked like this. And if you actually go over to the computer science department, all the labs look like this, uh, or it has a big square. Uh, and just the computers are around like that. And so what they did was they, they made their lab look more like the lab that we have here, where uh, it has more of a lounge feel. Of course, they expanded beyond that where they had couches. They've got, you know, little nooks that people can go over to where they, if they do have their laptop with them. Uh, one of the main differences as well is you could actually use your laptop to print personally. So you could print front and back pages and get really mad about that off of your own laptop instead of uh, off of the computers we have here in the lab that are doing that now. 
But the idea of the lounge feel is it was emphasizing uh, the student community. And it went on to talk about how uh, the push for using computer labs is to blur the lines between uh, the computer lab experience and the classroom experience into one experience. And so you have people who are doing group presentations and then the idea is that they go to work in the lab as a group. And so it facilitates the, uh, the learning process through the social aspect and promotes learning in that way. So the idea is that access is key for the social environment to be stimulated in such a way that it is beneficial for the individuals. So turning this over to Victoria is now to get into policy and move that forward into the meat of the presentation. Alright, so uh, as you all know, the current policy, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Monday, Thursday, Friday, 8 to 420, Tuesday and Wednesday, 8 to 8. And these hours, um, I know for me, like I can never remember what day they close at 8 and what day they close at 420. So with these inconsistent hours, you know, students, they it's just problematic and uh, so how much how 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 many times has this changed across a say four-year period um, I don't, did we look at the four-year period I know like it, it works around graduate students like schedules because they're the ones that help close it and, and run it so it when I interviewed Dr. Kinzer she uh, talked about the reason the lab hours are the way that they are now is because that is what they have access to for student workers to actually staff the lab. So I, she didn't say specifically how many times that it had changed, but she did indicate that it has changed and will change again based upon their availability. Right, yeah, it's with the worker schedule. So, um, yeah, and so, yeah, it's a staff responsibility to pay graduate students to close the lab according to their hours. So, and um, so our proposed policy, uh, we just want to, we want to change um, as soon as fall of uh, 2012, and we just want to extend the hours to 10 o'clock during um, uh, finals and midterms week because, as you all know, you're extremely busy, and uh, the lab provides, uh, of course, internet access, printing, um, and uh, a space for group projects, you know, because obviously everybody has group projects, especially in the speech department, and uh, with that space, you know, sometimes it's harder to meet other places, and that's just like a common area. So, extending that to 10 uh, would be ideal. <laughs> so, and I'm going to go on to uh, Sarah to talk about the feasibility and who it affects. Right. Go, go back, Sarah. I want to say this. So, this is your only. Um, Proposal right here uh, is just during midterm and finals week, Monday through Thursday. So no, none of this Saturday that was mentioned. That way we keep it. When would it open? When would it at eight o'clock? We just extend it, um, extend the closing hours. Yeah, we did talk about the um, the week before finals too because that's always really busy with dead week, but. Um, I think we just stuck uh, with with finals week and midterm week because it's more feasible. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to who it affects. Um, obviously, it's going to affect everyone in the department. Um, the students will gain access because the lab um, will have extended hours. Um, faculty ready will increase because students now have more time to complete their assignments and their tasks. And staff may have slot schedule changes in order to accommodate these hours. Uh, there are a few concerns for the economic feasibility. In order for the lab to be open, you have to have a graduate assistant supervising. And if we do not have one, the department would have to fund a volunteer. Or another option we looked at was um, finding extra hours from the work study and saving them for just the weeks of midterm and finals. As far as the social feasibility goes, um, staff does see a current problem with the current policy, and as Jory mentioned before, uh, the faculty does see the lab as a positive educational tool and believes that the extended hours will improve grades and make the students feel more involved with the department. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to Savannah to talk about advantages and disadvantages. All 
Tonight I will go ahead and start talking about the disadvantages. One of the disadvantages that we encountered when going over our proposed policy is cost. If the lab is open more, that means there's more opportunity for printing, which costs the department paper and ink. Um, also, if they were to hire a person to come in and supervise the computer lab, that would cost, but I will address that in the methods section. That also leads us to staff availability. Um, finding somebody to supervise the lab could be a problem, but again, I'll um, go over that in the methods. Advantages. Um, obviously, there will be increased availability, which I know for myself, it's finals week, and I feel like I live in the computer lab right now. I've been there pretty much every day. Um, so with the increased availability, there be more time for people to work on their final projects, such as the one in this class. Um, enhanced community, as Sean mentioned, with the uh, the study done with the laptops and access to a computer lab, it is believed that enhanced community will increase learning. If you feel a part of a community, then you will perform better. Also, I know with myself, it's really handy having the lab open whenever professors are there. I know Dr. Dorgan, I've run into her office numerous times and asked her quick questions whenever I was in the middle of working on a project. Um, also, as Sean also mentioned, access to essential programs. That's supposed to be programs. Um, like, for example, in vivo, some of these programs are difficult to access and are costly, but the wonderful thing is that they are on the computers in the lab, and so we don't have to pay to pay that. Now, moving on to the method. First, um, we would propose our proposal to Dr. Kinzer, the Chair of Mass Communications, and we would suggest the following method. The, for, to address the disadvantage, it won't cost if we use one of the graduate students. And the way that we would do this is through the distribution of hours. In Sean's interview with Dr. Kinzer, she stated that sometimes it's difficult to find things for graduate students to do to meet the hour requirement that they have. And so what Dr. Kinzer actually suggested is we could, if there's a graduate student who doesn't have anything to do for an hour that they're scheduled to supervise, or an hour that they're scheduled to work within the office, they can save that hour and apply it to midterm and finals week extending the lab availability. This can be accomplished through advanced scheduling for the graduate students. Basically, Dr. Kinzer and also the graduate students' professors can look over the requirements that those students would have and how, what access and what availability they would have during those two weeks. And with that, um, I would like to just go over what our presentation covered. We provided primary and secondary research, and we went over the current policy and our proposed policy of extending the lab hours to 10 o'clock during midterm and finals week, Monday through Thursday. And we addressed who it would affect, who would address the students, the faculty, and the grad students who are responsible for supervising the lab during um, those hours. We covered disadvantages and advantages and also offered the method in which we plan to achieve this proposal. And with that, we are open for questions. Okay, first off, and now I want to turn it over to other people, I'm going to save you some heartache. Uh, do not turn in a proposal to Dr. Dorgan with uh, Department of Mass Communications. It's the Department of Communication without an S. I'm telling you, it doesn't sound hot button, but that's a hot button issue. So make sure that anything you turn over, especially because she is not from mass communication, so be aware of that. I would like you to, are you planning on submitting? Yeah, she, uh, when I interviewed her, she said to bring in like a one page little handout. Good. And she said she would definitely be. I mean, most of actually what is in there as far as the proposal to implement it and propose it to her, she said, do this, and here, like, I just let her talk. <laughs> She's like, we can do this with the hours, we can save this up, and all that, so I'm like, that's great stuff, we're going to put it in there, you know, 
so. Well, but I thought that your idea that I really wanted to, to hear more about is this idea that I think ultimately the, the solution that you propose doesn't go to the problem you described is the lack of lab experience. I mean, by just opening it up in, in midterm, around midterm, and around finals, how do you address the problem of that you don't have sufficient lack or sufficient lab experience? Well, this was his term. This was your term, lab experience. And you had also talked about it in terms of lab community. Okay. I, I was confused if you meant the workers or the... No. Uh, uh, well, the, the biggest precedent that we had from like, personal experience was thinking back to qualitative um, class last semester. Um, when it came down to the end of the project, you had multiple uh, separate groups coming together in one room staying there till four in the morning and highlighting uh, data and laughing and talking. And so the idea, and I kind of almost wanted to bring in some of the like, belongingness needs research from uh, Carrie Oliveira's class um, and bring in the idea that when we feel as if we belong to a group, that we feel as if um, we are wanted in a group, that it boosts self-esteem, uh, it makes us not be as depressed, makes us not feel as bad about ourselves. And so the idea is that if we create an environment in which it's encouraged for people to be there uh, for longer periods of time and that people are fitting in and communicating as they're accomplishing their work together, they feel as if they're part of that community and once they feel as if they're part of that community, it will boost their uh, morale and their um, output. So how does your solution actually promote this lab experience in this community. Sarah? Well, I think with extending the hours, there are not going to be as many people in there, so you get to really do what you're, you know, need to do and be with your group. And we're starting small, you know, so, okay, next semester we can do midterm and finals week, and, you know, maybe next time we can find some more hours to extend it more weeks or even have it open every single day. For a I like that argument. Right there is that you're beta testing it around the most critical periods. Uh, but make sure you understand what your argument is because you kind of shifted the argument um, uh, to one about access to computer and then, and then this, this idea of community that I think is a really good one. I will tell you, I use that lab as a recruitment tool. I march every Every person into that lab, you know this, sitting in there, and I say, this is what you'll get if you come over here. And I feel like you guys kind of touched on it and then leapt off of that. What do you guys think? You, your lab. Uh, did you guys think about um, the Culp Center lab? I mean, that lab's open till 2 every day, and during finals week, I think it's open 24 hours. And, I mean, there's quite a few Macs in there that have all of the programs you guys talked about. Well, this kind of goes back to what we touched on with community. If we go to the Colt lab, then we would not, we would no longer have the community that we would have with the Com lab. And um, couldn't you just have a roving community, though? Couldn't you just kind of arrange to meet over at the Colt lab? What you guys proposed was ten, like I just ten p.m. But I mean, that one, it's two a.m. every day, and. I used to have groups, you know, my peer practices group would meet over there and we, um, we'd have to eat, you know, our pizza outside, but we'd be able to come back in and complete all of the Photoshop design that we need to get done. Um, I know it. Sorry, did you want to Oh, uh, you're fine. You want to I can, but what I was going to say is the one, I've been to the Culp Center Lab like once or twice, and I, I like going to the Culp Lab because it's people that we have class with, people that we associate with in class and out of class. And whenever I went to the cold lab, I was actually alone, but there were people in there that were very disruptive and I really didn't get anything accomplished in there. And like I feel like when you're in the communications lab, like we're I feel like we're very confident students and we're in there for a purpose. Even if we're meeting with a group and we are talking and being, you know, social, it's not I don't feel like it's as disruptive. And whenever I went into the cold lab and they were playing music very loudly, very obnoxiously, and I just found it very disruptive, and I was not productive, and I've never had that experience in the calm lab. So. Before we answer any more questions, just to add on to what Elizabeth was saying, I think this also goes back to Sean's research of the setting, and 
with the Colt Lab, you're not allowed to have drinks. You aren't allowed to have any of that. And also the tables, like whenever it came time for coding data, whenever you have to lay your papers out and a lot of the, I mean, I've been living up there pretty much and I eat pretty much all my meals there and you can't do that in the Colt. And I think it goes back to that sense of belonging and community. We can't do that there, but we can do that here. It's just more than that what you can do might bring up, just because there is access. Those programs are accessible. But it's more that, that is an argument you have to be prepared for, because I'm going to tell you right now, I've been here going on 10 years, and when students say, I want, I want this lab, and they, and they go, but there are labs, what, the second floor lab you have access to? You have access to CULP, and I just want to tell you that your argument can be derailed in five seconds if you don't have an appropriate response. Yes. <laughs> why not, like, uh, as far as your proposal, I know you mentioned volunteers in your presentation, but why not more of like a student volunteer as far as, you know, bringing to this community that Dr. Kinder, we had a qualitative research in class, and we used the lab until 4 and Why not use that more of an argument to bring in the community? I asked her specifically about that, um, and she said that when I, I, the comment I had about maintaining the integrity of the department, that was her response to that. And so, and the other Wait, response explain is that. What do you, uh, that if there are a set of values, in other words, going back to what you're saying as far as people playing music loudly, things like that that are not a part of what we want to promote in the lab. If she has a volunteer, she, that volunteer has no responsibility to us. They're just doing it out of their goodwill. And what she says specifically is you can't fire a volunteer. She doesn't pay a volunteer. So there's mm -hmm. no incentive for them if, whoops, I forgot to lock the door. Whoops, I didn't care to mediate a conflict. You know, whoops, I decided I was hungry and just left and somebody stole something. So with the volunteer, there's not that, that idea of formal responsibility. And if you fire them, they say, well, I'll just go home and do something else, yeah, so. And also on that, um, she, or, I don't know who's, I don't know, I remember you saying it, that there was also a lack of um, the graduate student jobs available now, like, it's starting to get cut, and so, you know, that's a, a good job for them, so, you know, another job. Yeah, you wouldn't want to talk about that. Uh, during, your no, during your research, did you all uh, survey any students to ask when they would want the lab hours extended? Because I know for me personally, I have two presentations this week that serve kind of as two of my finals, and our group, one of them had to meet later, so we had to leave, leave the library. Like for me, I feel like it would be really beneficial to like dead week or dead weekend finals. Mm -hmm. Well, we I, did mention that that was discussed. Like we just narrowed it down to just the week and finals and just the week of midterms, and kind of how Sarah mentioned it, it was just kind of like a trial and error type thing. Because I mean, if we go in with all these demands and it fails. It just kind of gets thrown out the window. But, but I do wonder if you add a dead week. Because I, you're right. I mean, or, uh, especially oral intensive classes, we just pound yeah. you guys this dead week and you end up dead uh, because of it. And so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is. Probably it's probably better than finals week because there's so little that does go on. If I would have been asked that, I probably would have said dead. You might want to do a, a quick, frankly, survey to include that in your one page, especially tables. No, the reason we did was just because uh, the idea of funding was pushed so hard. So it was just like, okay, here's the most amount possible that we could even open it to be, you know, in the end. Which is part of the reason the Culp Lab, I mean, that's what I would respond with there as well, is that um, there just aren't enough workers. Because Dr. Kendrick, she said, I'd love to have it open all the time, but we don't have the workers anymore. Because they cut state funding in half, cut it in half again, they're about to cut it. Oh. Tuition's about to go up 8%, yeah. so congratulations, everybody. Um, yeah, so there's just not enough. Well, they're having to pay for my my salary hikes. Yeah, the, I mean the money that <laughs> I'm making. Sixty-two thousand. I it's, a semester. it's semester. amazing <laughs> what I make. Like, uh, Katie's been patient. I was just wondering if like if y'all extend the hours, if just the comm students could be like the extra three hours, and not necessarily education students, but I just you can't single them out. So where the, the, where the funding up. comes from, I don't think it's. Like a lot of times I go in there and I can't even get on a computer. It's and it's really so frustrating. It's so frustrating because they come in and if all the PCs are taken up, they ask you a thousand oh, questions yes. on how to work how them you at. Pay all the math. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> how does this work? Well, what's great though is it's gotten better because they actually do have a printer downstairs now, so there is less traffic in there from ed majors and such. Don't but yeah, it definitely is still 
there, but yeah, we can't. Okay, before, before I was in the house, I did Yeah, well, and, and, and the dumpster. Where I became a communication one, and I went in there all the time, but now it's annoying to me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. I have a way to do that, too, so if y'all are mean to her, I'll still come after. Are there any more questions? Do grad students have finals, too? Technically. It's largely uh, paper, uh, paper based, and so they could they they could do most of their final type. I mean, obviously they're going to be working, you know, a lot in that time. So they could do it while they work. But yeah, I mean, it would give them the opportunity to work on their work while managing in it. And plus, through planning ahead, even if like even if they weren't working on the clock, but they are staffed by the lab and knew that they would be in there. If that was agreed upon beforehand, you know, they can open the lab up just on the fact that they know that they will be in there working anyway. Yeah. Um, and so that's also a possibility. That would be, that'd be good. And good also, that. just going back with hours, just to clarify, they would get the same amount of hours to go towards their tuition. Mm -hmm. It would just be distributed differently over the semester. So they wouldn't actually be working more. Right. They would not be working more. They would have the same amount of hours, just different. Are there any questions? So you are going to go through and try to see? Yes. I, I think, I mean, every year, I, no, every year, every semester, excuse me, every day I hear complaints about this. And so I keep waiting for a student group, uh, either formal or informal, to, to, to move this forward. And it's just never happened. And I would invite you to do it. Because otherwise, faculty and staff are making the decision, and frankly, I, I'm not living the life anymore. I can observe it, I can see it, I can take in uh, your 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 cries. feedback, your your cries and your complaints, um, and I report them. But until you guys mobilize and document in a reader-friendly way, um, I say this because you mentioned the one one page. One page. No, Bullets. Sorry. Scam. I'm not yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, you mentioned the one page. That's why I was pointing to you. Thank you.